Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I'm Carol Howell, internationally certified dementia practitioner, and glad you've chosen to join me today. So today we're going to talk about preventing falls. As this is being recorded, it's scheduled to release just before Christmas. And then I'm going to take a little bit of time off to celebrate the wonderful Christmas season with family and friends and just take a break. But before I do that, I do want to talk to you about preventing falls in your loved one, especially when there's a lot of people in the house. We increase the chances for those falls. We don't want to come on the other side of Christmas with a black and blue face or a broken hip or a broken arm. And unfortunately, this is very common for our loved ones with dementia. I know this because I went through it with my mama. She never broke anything. Oh, how I prayed. Please, Lord, no broken hips or broken legs or arms. But she she did fall a couple times and mama was real good about sliding out of her bed. She would ooch, ooch, that's a southern word. She would move herself to the edge of the bed and instead of standing up, which she could not figure out how to do on her own, she would just slide out of the bed and there she would be lying in the floor. And then the staff would have to call and say, Miss Vera fell. Well, she really didn't fall. She just slid out of the bed, so it was kind of kind of interesting. But there are things we can do to prevent or help to reduce, is more accurate, help to reduce the chances of a fall. We are not going to 100% reduce or prevent falls. We are not going to 100% prevent falls for anybody. If there's anybody that's good at falling, it is me. I can fall over my own two feet, but we can also reduce the chances of falling. And the first thing you want to do is get the junk out of your house. Now, I've been in some of your houses. You got too much you-know-what sitting around. All those tchotchkes sitting around that just get the attention. Overstimulation, that's not good for your loved one's simplicity. Now, not to the point that there's nothing to look at, but if you've just got stuff everywhere, it's a little bit too um, stimulating environment for folks with dementia. So maybe paring down a little bit is a good idea, but getting all the stuff out of the walkway, out of the normal paths, from their chair to the kitchen, from their chair to the bathroom, from their chair to where wherever that they may travel, that there's not stuff they're going to catch their feet on. And honey, throw rugs have got to go. I just, throw rugs on the whole are just not safe for most people. The only rugs that are in my house are heavy rugs that you're not going to catch your foot under. They're very heavy, really there kinds of rugs. But folks with dementia, their gait is off. They're not picking up their feet properly. I'm not good at that either. (laughs) But that's a very easy way to get your foot caught or your toe of your shoe or your foot caught under that rug and down you go. You want to store everyday things that they will use within their reach. You don't want somebody reaching way up high trying to get something. They get up on their tiptoes. You get up on your tiptoes. Yep. Because you got to remember, our loved ones are not weebles. You remember weebles from, oh, from the... 1980s, I guess. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Well, our folks are not weebles because they will fall down. I have a weebles. Let me just get it out here. Do you guys guys remember weebles? Um, Now, if you're listening to this on the podcast rather than seeing the video, you can't see this, but you can find it on my website if you want to um, watch the video. But this is a weebles, and they they wobble, but they don't fall down. But your folks are going to fall down. And so we want to store those things that they will use every day right within their reach that they can easily get to it. In the kitchen, you might consider taking a cabinet door off and leaving that cabinet exposed with the things they will use every day, their favorite cereal, their favorite snack, their bread, their fork, their spoon, their plate, their cup, some napkins, things that they can get to where they don't have to search through five, six drawers and you know seven or eight cabinets to find what they want. You want to make their room safe. Consider handrails on the bed if you are not in a, an assisted living or an environment, the uh, facility type of environment. If you're in the home, you can put rails on your bed. 
why you can't do it in an assisted living. I know why, because it's against the law in most states, but it's just a dumb law. But if you can safely put handrails on the bed for your loved one, I am all for it. Now, if you think your loved one's going to be one that's going to try to come over those handrails and then fall even further down, be aware of that and don't put them. So many of our folks just need it for the same reason a kid did. They go to turn over, they roll, and they fall out. You don't want that. So you just want something to kind of protect that. Um, bed rails um, on the bed are good, but think about an adjustable bed. Now, I thought that was going to be really expensive, you know, one that raises up and down. And it's nice if the head comes up and down, but especially if the whole bed will come up and down. I was able to buy one of those used for my mama for a hundred bucks and the dude delivered it. Yeah, I mean, he had to travel about 30 minutes to bring it to me, but he did. Um, he just needed it out of his house. His brother had passed. He no longer needed it, and it raised up and down. Let me tell you how much easier that made providing care for my mama when she became um, immobile and was in the bed for 24 days before passing. We could raise her right up to the proper level for us and clean her and wash her and change her clothes and get her comfortable and then lower that bed all the way down. Anytime my mom was left alone in her room, that bed was as far down as it would go. So if she did start to come out of the bed, she didn't have far to go padded mats on the floor. You can buy these mats. They're not super expensive. They're generally blue and they're about the length of the bed, not quite, so that if they come out of the bed like my mama did sliding out of the bed, they're going to land on that padded blue mat. And um, that's just a, an extra little precaution. It's a good thing. If your loved one is incontinent, you're probably using Depends. I recommend on the bed you put those blue mats. They're disposable um, I don't know what the things are made out of, but if they tinkle on them, it absorbs into that blue mat and protects the mattress and the box, well, not the box springs. It's not going to go that far, but it protects the mattress from urine or from anything that might um, soil the bed. Um, if your folks are not using the pins, I still think I would put that between the sheet and the mattress maybe so it's not real obvious and doesn't move or get on, you know, in their way just to protect. Be aware if your folks are not using Depends that they might need Depends at night and consider that. I can tell you something that um, changed for my mom that I was a little bit startled at when it happened was when they put the kinds of Depends on her that, and I use Depends generically, um, pull-ups on her that didn't pull up. They were diaper style where they actually had tabs that pulled off and hooked on each side. And I thought, I don't know, it just bothered me that mama needed those. But see, when staff comes in to take care of, their, of that person in the middle of the night and they're wet or they're soiled, it is much easier to change them in the middle of the night with those kinds of... Um, uh, depend type products on rather than one that's got to pull off the pajama bottoms, pull that down, put on the clean one, put on the clean pajama bottoms. It's a big problem. So think about that. It might make your life easier. Think about mirrors in your home. If you've got mirrors that are at their level, that's distracting, believe it or not. It's not something that is necessarily a good idea, especially if we're in the later stages of dementia. Our folks in those stages may not recognize that person they see in the mirror. You've got to remember they're living back in time. And if they think it's 1956 and they look in the mirror in 2019, almost 2020, the person person they see, they don't recognize. Because see, they think that they're 18 years old, or they think they're however old, and this person is not. And they really can start thinking that there's a stranger in their room. It's frightening. Um, they want you to get that person out that shows up every time they go in their room. They're there every time. And it's that person in the mirror. So be aware of that. Make sure that any medications they are on, if the side effect is dizziness, that you're aware of that. And Maybe talk to the doctors or something that we can date that doesn't cause dizziness, but that can be a problem. Make sure that um, dentures, hearing aids, glasses are all stored in, a, in an area where they can easily get the, to them. Don't put the hearing aid up on a shelf in the, in the medicine cabinet or the glasses um, or the dentures where they can't reach them at night. Because they may wake up and decide they need those. So they need to be at their level where they can easily get to them. Make sure they fit properly and are on them um, adequately. Uh, make sure their shoes fit. 
You know, if we're walking around in shoes that don't fit or shoes that are worn, then it just increases your chances of fall, plus damage to the foot. It's just not good. And then make sure they're hydrated well and fed well and they're not hungry or thirsty. Those are things that make dementia worse. And not being hydrated leads to constipation. Constipation makes dementia worse. But then you don't want to be constantly drinking, 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 thinking you're going to keep them from being dehydrated because then they're just going to need to tinkle more. So make sure you've got a balance there. Maybe limiting caffeine not overdoing on caffeine and not overdoing on um, fizzy waters or um, uh, carbonated drinks. That's it. There you go, because that will make them have to tinkle more. And the more we got to tinkle, the more we got to go to the bathroom, but keep that balance so that they don't become dehydrated. Well, just a few tips for maybe reducing your chances of your loved one falling. We're not going to prevent it 100%, but we sure are going to work to reduce it because, you know, the human skin is not made to survive going splat you're going to come up all black and blue. That's not a good look. All right. Hope that helps you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to. And you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth. You can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the, hunt, the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.